Hello and welcome to another episode of Renaissance Botany. In this episode, we'll talk about the paper by Marta Bandini, plant use in a city in northern Italy during the late medieval and Renaissance periods, results of the archaeobotanical investigation of the mirror pit, 14th to 15th century AD in Ferrara. This is yet another study regarding the mirror pit within Ferrara, Italy. The main goal of this excavation site is to figure out what plants and animals were eaten on a regular basis. The explanation on what the upper middle class within that time period ate. Using the mirror pit, which was predominantly used by the upper middle class within that region. And here are the results. The most common plants within the mirror pit were figs. Remnants of fig fruit have been found within this refuse pit. This makes sense considering that figs have historically been eaten both as a common fruit for fresh eating purposes, but also to make jams and wines. It was plausibly imported both in Ferrara, Italy, sheltered locations both in house or kitchen gardens would suffice to be an ideal growing spot for said tree. Grapes were a second most abundant within the mirror pit, specifically the seeds. The high number of seeds indicate that this is a refuse pit for winemaking or processing of some sort or another, as the pips were unbroken and show no sign of teeth marks. It's likely that these grapes were used to make wine or syrup, and it makes sense since winemaking was a household task within medieval mansions, and during those ancient times people used to press only the individual grapes by trampling them in vats. This method would have not crushed the pips. This method was also used to make sapa, a type of syrup still in use today that is made from grapes. The grape was the most common plant within Ferrara in the Middle Ages, cultivated within the walls of the city and used as decorations. Brambles of various species were also found within this dig pit. Brambles include members of the Rubus genus, which include blackberries and raspberries. The former was the most common of the brambles within this dig site. The high number of examples of blackberry within this dig site suggests that blackberries are used in cooking as well as raw eating. Plausibly, they're used to make the same stuff we make in modern times, such as jams, jellies, and syrups, and drinks. Since a lot of endocarps are remaining within this dig site, and the production of jellies, syrups, and drinks leaves behind a lot of endocarps, this is one of the most likely explanations. Although in ancient Rome, blackberries were traditionally captured from the wild for collection, Cultivation seems to have increased during the medieval time periods. Cultivation is speculated to have begun by managing a portion of a forest within a region that had blackberries before gradually transitioning to replanting raspberries in cultivated gardens. Similar phenomena have been found historically in other species of blackberry as well as prunus and fragaria species. As this pattern was found in 12th to 13th century France. Raspberry is scarce within this dig site, with the only remnants being possibly dewberries, a different species of rubus, which is also a wild plant. Meddlers and mulberry remnants are also found within this dig site in high abundance. Both species have a historical use as both a decorative and fruiting tree. Remnants of different plum species were also found within this dig site alongside other species such as sweet cherry and peaches. Within this region, there's also small numbers of pomegranate, pear, walnut, apple, and service tree, as well as chestnut, jujube, and other species, indicating that while these luxury items were more typically eaten by the super-rich during that time period, the middle class could still on occasion enjoy them. From a vegetable perspective, the most abundant remnant of vegetables found within that dig site was purslane, which made up the majority of the dig site. Remnants of carrot, both the mericarps and the occasional seed were also found within that dig site. Remnants of parsley, black mustard, anise, dill, fennel, coriander, poppy, cumin, and chamomile were also found within this dig site. Chamomile has been historically difficult to grow within this region and were almost exclusively used as a medicinal plant. 
Plants that are found in high concentration are parsley, black mustard, and anise, and seem to have been used extensively around the house. Black mustard seems to have been cultivated for making actual mustard, as most remnants of black mustard seem to be crushed and show evidence of extraction. From a fiber perspective, a small amount of hemp and flax seeds were found within the dig site. The most common plant that was extracted for oil seems to be Brassica rapa, which appeared in great abundance within that dig site. From a cereal and pulse perspective, among cereals, broomcorn millet was the most abundant within that dig site, followed by sorghum, and then a few instances of wheat and other cereals. The seed of sorghum appears uncharred, indicating that this plant may have been used to make brooms, as currently occurs within the Ferrara region. Pea and broadbean were also found extensively within the dig site as the sole pulses within that dig site. In terms of our fruit, wild strawberries and regular musk melon have been found in remnant form within this dig site. Melon has been historically been grown in Ferrara since the 10th century AD, uninterrupted for centuries, shortly after the city's foundation. Even in modern days, melon is still a major crop within the Ferrara region, and is still found in fresco. Flowers were also found in the dig site, specifically pansy and dinyphus seeds. They are probably grown as ornamental plants in gardens. They are also historically been used as foods such as candied flowers or additions to salad. Although today in Ferrara, they are used mainly in cake decoration. Remnants of chestnut have also been found within the dig site, although a bit more sparse. Although other written texts seem to suggest that chestnuts were cultivated heavily, and to this day is still being cultivated heavily within Ferrara. What does the researcher conclude from this study? There's heavy amounts of wine making by the middle class during that era, as well as mustard making, oil making, and fruit wine making. From what I can conclude, a great deal of the food culture within Ferrara Italy remains very similar to what was found in the medieval era. Well, that about covers everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to me on BitChute for a greater variety of content. Four videos a week. And thank you to all my subscribers on both platforms. I appreciate it.